What's up, world? It's I, the enlightened one to the fam, Anwar to the government, two dance to many others, and all kind of things to all kind of other people, you understand? And I'm here with the first episode of this new show on the Sports Fam entitled Friday Food, where I'm coming to you every Friday with a little to-go box for you to take home for the weekend, some little food for thought, some things you might want to marinate on while you're going through getting your little sports fix for the weekend, you understand? I'm not going to hold you too long. I'm going to roll right into it. <sighs> Last night, on Thursday Night Football, the Ravens defeated the Steelers 26-6. That's not what I want to talk about. During the telecast, Jim Nance called the Ray Rice incident the darkest moment in the history of the league. And he was serious. Did anybody else think that was crazy? Not only him, a couple days ago, Mike Greenberg from Mike and Mike in the Morning also said something to that effect, similar, about it being the darkest moment in the history of sports. But then I think immediately he realized how crazy that sounded, and then he said, oh, 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 there might be some of the things I could, but not just off the top of my head, I can't think of them. Word. Did y'all forget that Aaron Hernandez um, one of the best tight ends in the NFL is sitting in jail right now, awaiting trial for um, shooting and killing three people. Allegedly. I think that's a little darker of a day when we find that out. Oh, and what are people going to say? It's because of the video. Because we saw it. Yeah, we didn't see Aaron Hernandez shoot nobody, but we did see the video of him and his clique walking back into his house, hoodied up, looking like a scene from Baller Block. And I saw that video. Did you see that? Did we forget about um, Ray Carruth hiring somebody to abort his fiance and the baby because she wouldn't get an abortion? So he paid somebody to shoot and kill her? Did we forget about that? And like she's dead and gone. Condolences to her family. I know they're still dealing with that. We'll never get over that. I think that was a little darker than this. Um, did they forget about Ben Roethlisberger? Um, strong arm and then taking it from people like Ty Mac on that episode of Different World when he tried to get Freddie and Dwayne Wayne had to come through the sunroof and get him? Allegedly. I think that was a little darker. The hyperbole has to stop. It's ridiculous. Yeah, whatever's going to happen with Ray Rice is going to happen. But, man, it's just getting a little bit out of control. Like, stop it. It's not the darkest day in the history of the league. That's first. Okay, second, the slate of NFL games, period. This is that week, right? It's a couple notable teams teetering on that brink. Might be facing that 0-2, trying to fight it off. We got the Cowboys, you got the Bears, you got the Patriots. And we got the Colts, right? Some notable teams are right, trying to avoid that 0-2. I'm really interested to see how that's going to play out. But another thing I want to see play out is the Cowboys-Titans game. I'll be watching this closely, right? Not a Cowboys fan. You know who I represent. Understand me. Talk about them in a minute. But I believe that the Cowboys offense is still the Cowboys offense. Tony Romo had only thrown three interceptions in one game one other time in his career. He only threw 10 interceptions last year. Let's not act like this man is all of a sudden just an interception machine. That's ridiculous. Give some credit to the 49ers secondary. So I want to see this week if all of a sudden, wow, the Cowboys offense looks better. They did some better things. And the Titans defense plays well too. So I want to see that matchup. I also want to see the reverse, right? The 49ers D against Cutler. Because uh, Eli, this week he's playing against Arizona. <laughs> Good luck with that, right? And that's always just funny to me, right? How you have a 10-year veteran, two-time Super Bowl winning quarterback um, in a new offense, but the entire game is he needs help. They need to help him. But RG3, a third-year quarterback playing in the same division in a new offense, is he should know better by now. He has to get better. They should put Kirk Cousins in. He's better for this offense. 
We'll see how this plays out for these 0-1 teams trying to fight off that 0-2. As far as New England, look for those boys to go 0-2 and, and have to answer that question. Minnesota is better than you think. Mike Zimmer, North Turner, don't play. Look at their track record. North Turner has offenses balling everywhere he goes. Name me a quarterback under a North Turner coordinated offense that didn't play well. And when you have those weapons around, the Vikings better than you think. Watch for the Patriots going 0-2, man. Third, we're going to stick with the NFL. Roger Goodell. Man, this guy. I love how he can launch an investigation into something he did to delay the process, right? Like, imagine if everybody could do that. Imagine if somebody gets caught, I don't know, selling weed, and they go to court and the judge says, we have confirmed evidence that a pound of weed arrived at your residence. And if that person could just sit there and say, wow. I wasn't aware of that. I'm going to launch an investigation into this pound of weed that supposedly arrived at my house. And the judge just says, okay, get back to me in four months after you complete your investigation. We'll talk about it again. Wouldn't life be great if you could just do that? Life has to be great for Roger Goodell, man. I don't know whether to hate or idolize that dude. So now we get an investigation that will take months. And what do you think that investigation will uncover? No wrongdoing on the part of the commissioner. So life can go on. It's so full of it. So now they're saying the last investigation of this nature took four months. So expect that it might take that long. Man, if he really was telling the truth, that investigation could take 15 minutes. You know how you do that investigation? You get up out of his chair, walk down the hallway, do press the elevator, go down to that floor where that phone number originated from, come off the elevator, walk into that office, play the voicemail. Who voices this on this voicemail? What you think the people in there are going to say? You think they trying to get you? Diane. He go right over there to Diane. Diane, they sent that DVD of the Ray Rice beating to me and you didn't give it to me? I'm sorry, Roger. End of investigation. And Jerry Richardson, did y'all see that man? <laughs> that was domestic violence. And when it comes to domestic, domestic violence, My stance is not one of the indifference. <laughs> Come on, man. Stop it. How fake can somebody get? I, I was waiting for one person on TV to call out how fake that was. Everybody, when they played that clip, everybody just paused like they were really touched by his emotion. Come on, Jared. <laughs> if you want to know how I stand on domestic violence, just... Go out there, Greg, and get me three more sacks this Sunday. <laughs> Come on, Jerry, you're killing me. Lastly, let me get out of here. Floyd Mayweather taking on Madonna in part two in the rematch tomorrow. Look for Floyd to handle this business, but I want to leave y'all with some food for thought on this. Every time Mayweather and Pacquiao comes up, a lot of people have their opinion. Who delayed the fight? Who was running from who? A lot of y'all people just hate Floyd Mayweather, just face it. He hasn't made himself the most likable person at times, I can imagine, but you should never let your biases get in the way of common sense. And you should never just run off your mouth unless you have facts. Um, you should really go look at an article I posted in the Sports Fam a while back by Ben Thompson from a few years ago. Just Google Ben Thompson Mayweather Pacquiao timeline. He does a great job of linking all the articles as these negotiations went on. If you look at this scenario and people keep saying until they fight each other, the original fight, everything was agreed on until Mayweather brought up drug testing. The same drug testing that all boxers are doing now that Manny Pacquiao himself asked Brandon Rios to do, all of a sudden, now you're for it. But the whole fight fell apart because of it. Now is it because Pac-Man is not on them power pellets anymore and he's back to looking like a normal boxing look. I'm not going to judge the man. All of us make mistakes. All of us do things. Let me give you some facts. 
about why Manny Pacquiao may have done what he done. Let's be real. Most of you never heard of Manny Pacquiao before he fought Oscar De La Hoya. Some of you have if you were a boxing fan or a diehard sports fan, but most of you have not. Boxers in those lighter weights don't generally get mainstream media attention. His fight against Juan Manuel Marquez on March 15, 2008 was at 130, 130 pounds, junior lightweight. 130 pounds. Later that year, on December 6th of 2008, he fought Oscar De La Hoya at 147 pounds. For the Marquez fight, he was guaranteed $3 million in a piece of the pay-per-view. Oscar De La Hoya comes to him with this crazy idea. Hey, I'll come down and wait. You come up. We'll make this dream fight. Oscar De La Hoya was the biggest draw in boxing. Pretty much boxing history as far as his pay-per-view numbers. Manny Pacquiao is faced with a dilemma. Do I turn this fight down? Or do I gain 17 pounds and still maintain my fighting ability in order to get an $11 million guarantee was turned into $15 million with the pay-per-view that he walked away with. He had never made more than $3 million as a guarantee for a fight in his life. For the De La Hoya fight, $11 million guarantee, so you almost quadrupled your guarantee and with pay-per-view it went up to $15 million. All I'm saying is, I can't necessarily blame the dude. Oscar De La Hoya gave him a fight he couldn't refuse, and he put that weight on in the only way he can. Show me another person who can gain 17 pounds of muscle and be quicker, faster, stronger. In nine months, how do you gain 17 pounds of muscle, okay, and be quicker, faster, stronger? All of the same circumstantial evidence that people use to nail Barry Bonds to the cross, the size of his head, his performance, this, that. It's the same circumstantial evidence that was around Pacquiao. All I'm saying is, I truly believe he did it for the money. This is America. This is this world. This is what they tell you to do. I can't necessarily say I blame them. We shouldn't encourage people to cheat, but I understand. And I can understand somebody saying, you'll make $15 million in one night. You've never made more than three, but you have to get up to this weight. The only other way would have been to eat, eat, eat. He would have came in soft. He would have came in flabby. And he probably would have got the brakes beat off of him. Instead, he beat the brakes off Oscar De La Hoya, a person who had never quit on his stool, a person who had never had the brakes beaten off of him in that manner. And all of a sudden, this little man is coming up and waiting doing this. All I'm saying is... Exercise a little sense, do a little research when you talk about who really caused this rift. Go back, read those articles, and see how the Pac Pacquiao camp responded. Just a little more food for thought on this first episode of Friday Food. We out of here. Enjoy this first weekend. I'm out.